Hello. Uh, this is kind of a different way of doing this, um, but I just wanted to give out some information and also um, give you a presentation that you can keep and look back over if you need to. Of course, we have our parent handbook on the Branson RecPlex website, and it is very detailed. So this is just brief, uh, maybe a refresher for some of you since it may have been a couple of summers. Um, or uh, just an introduction, a slight introduction for those of you who have never been on the swim team before. So here's our contact information. Uh, it is best to contact the RecPlex um, and then they can get in touch with me if they need to, but usually the front desk um, has answers to most questions, um, especially regarding payment and that sort of thing. Um, but if you have an individual coaching question, then my email is available. And then also please make sure you sign up for the remind text, um, which is at the bottom here, text at B waves, the number 81010. And that's how I send out um, reminders as well as if there's weather delays or cancellations throughout the summer. So here's a little bit of our mission statement for the Branson Waves. Um, we are a competitive team, uh, meaning that we do go and compete and give that opportunity to swimmers, but we are also focused on the swimmer as a, an, an individual, as a human being, and um, developing their character and qualities like physical fitness um, and self-confidence, um, but we also want to be developing those competitive uh, swimming strokes and um, being on a team. So the overall cost for joining the team is $85. And then if you choose to go to meets, it is $3 for individual events and $8 for relays, but that is split um, by the four swimmers um, on the relay. And then equipment, which we provide most equipment, um, I'll show you, um, I'm not sure if it's on the next slide, but a few slides later, um, what equipment you would need to buy and then traveling costs like um, gas, hotel, food, that sort of thing if you travel to meets. So the only requirement is that your child must be able to swim across the pool without stopping or touching the bottom sides, lane lines, um, or anything else of the pool. So they are just able to swim 25 yards across the pool without any assistance. Um, I all I get the question, do they have to swim on top of the water or what? Nope. Um, they can swim on top of the water or below as long as they don't have to have any help to get across. Okay, practices. Um, we have evening practices for everyone the last week of May, so May 24th through the 28th um, from 6 to 7 p.m. And then for the rest of the summer, it's all morning practices from uh, May 28th, the day after Memorial Day, um, to August 2nd. Uh, the last week of practice is for only our A Championship qualifiers. Um, and so that's a little bit different, um, but those swimmers I would get in contact with at the end of the summer. Um, so we have a competitive team practice and a recreational team practice. Competitive team is our first practice this summer, and that's 7 to 8.30 a.m. Uh, that is for any swimmer who intends to travel and compete in swim meets. So I am requiring that you commit to three swim meets, um, or three invitationals, I should say, um, before you join that competitive team practice. And we just really want to... Uh, have a more central focus and motivation for being there. Um, so that is reserved for those who are going to compete in at least three meets and our meet counts, um, the Branson meet, home meet counts. Um, then we have recreational team practice, which is second practice, 8.15 to 9.30 a.m. Those are for any swimmers that are just seeking to exercise and maybe improve on their strokes. Um, but they're not planning on competing or going to championships or anything. Um, we, I still really, really encourage those swimmers to go to our home meet. That's a great experience and good for us as well.
Okay, so equipment as far as costs go and um, things that you would need to buy yourself would just be suit, goggles, and swim cap. Um, so I've kind of given a little bit of direction, but really um, you have a lot of um, options for this. Uh, these are just my recommendations. So for a suit, um, it works best when girls have one pieces. We do diving and jumping and um, swimming at a faster pace. Um, a one piece definitely works a lot better um, for the girls. And then for boys, jammers, which are the knee length tight uh, swimsuits or speedos. Um, both of those work best for boys. Um, swimming trunks can get really heavy and create a lot of drag. Um, so unless you're doing that on purpose, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, goggles. So goggles are kind of a hard thing. You kind of have to pick your poison here. Goggles, if you invest in a good quality pair, then you won't have to buy as many because your kid is complaining that they're leaking or whatever it is, you know, they're too tight or they pull their hair or things like that. However, you have to be on them to keep up with their goggles. Um, then you would probably spend more money if they're just losing them. So that is your own battle. Um, but those are, that's just kind of what you have to decide. Um, okay, for swim cap, we have Branson Wave swim caps available at the front desk for purchase for $5. Um, I really like it when all of the swimmers wear those Branson Waves caps at meets. Um, it's really easy for me and for other parents and uh, fans to see where the Branson Wave swimmers are, um, just to identify you. It also really helps um, the officials to see that everyone is in the correct lane, um, and, it, and it creates team camaraderie. So um, definitely go to the front desk to buy a swim cap, a Branson Wave swim cap, for practice, that's where you can have your fun. If you want to buy a funky one um, or just one off wall at Walmart, whatever, um, then you can use those at practice. I would recommend silicone. They're a little bit more expensive, usually like $2 more, um, but they do not pull your hair and they don't break as easily at, whenever it comes to like um, them drying and that sort of thing. Okay, here's our schedule for our meets this year. There are just a few things I want to point out here. Um, so the meets that are in yellow, that are highlighted in yellow, those are our team meets. So you are able to go to any of the meets, any of the invitationals um, from Web City to Nevada. Um, you can go to as many as you would like. However, the team meets will have all of the Branson coaches there, and those are the ones that I'm really pushing because it's easier to create relays. Um, it's easier whenever we have a ton of families for our summers to get around and to feel the atmosphere of um, that they're supported. Um, it's just, it's way more fun whenever we have more summers. Um, if we don't have team meets, then we just kind of have summers going uh, just a few to each meet, and so we don't get the same um, opportunities that we can whenever we're we're putting all of our swimmers at certain meets. Um, you are not required to go to the team meets to count for your towards your three meets. Um, it's just my recommendation. Um, to be on that competitive team, you do have to go to three invitational meets. This is also the requirement to go to a championship meet. Um, so for the B championship meet, you just have to have a time in the event to be able to swim um, at B's, and then you have had to go to three meets. You don't have to swim that event three times. You just have had to go to three swim meets and have a time in the event that you want to swim at B's. For A championships, you have to have a certain time, like a time cut, to qualify for A championships. You can qualify for A championships at B championships. Um, so those are our meets. And then lastly, our home meet is June 26th, and it is just one day. I want, every 
I encourage everyone to go to our home meet on June 26th, rather, uh, whether you are in competitive or recreational um, practices. It's great experience for newcomers. And then obviously it's close to home and um, easy for those of you who are trying to get another meet in. Okay, what does a swim meet look like? So um, you will, of course, sign up to go to the meet uh, the week before. Well, I would actually prefer if you sign up as soon as you know, um, but the deadline would be the Friday, be, uh, the week before the meet. Um, and the reason this is, is I have to send off entries. And so um, I need to know before that the deadline for me to send entries to the host team. So you get there um, the morning of or maybe the night before, but um, a lot of families set up tents or canopies um, and they have blankets, they have snacks, um, and it's just kind of like an all day thing. So you wanna you know, be comfortable and make sure that you have food to eat and um, something to keep you out of the sun, sunblock, that sort of thing. Um, chairs, towels. Um, then for the event, there is a heat sheet, and typically these are $5 at the meet. Um, so you buy the heat sheet and you would highlight your swimmer um, in whatever events they are in. And this just helps you keep track of uh, time and where they need to be. And you can listen for the event number because you know what event your swimmer is in. Um, then there is the bullpen. So there is someone over the speakers the whole time calling people to the bullpen. So that's just an area that they, uh, that there's a few volunteer parents and they just put the swimmers where they need to be um, in the correct order, in the correct heat. So that way, whenever they get behind the blocks, they are ready to go and there's not a lot of confusion or waiting. So um, it keeps the swim meet very efficient. Um, and then they swim their event, they um, get a time, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they disqualify and we call those DQs. And that is what our officials on each side of the pool are doing. They are actually judging. Um, they are making sure that every swimmer is doing the right stroke and they're using the right technique. Um, and some techniques are not allowed. So those would be cause for disqualification as well as um, false starting. Um, there's a variety of things, but those are the most uh, common. And then those sheets get delivered to the coaches and we have exactly why the swimmer disqualified and then we can work on it in practice and make sure that doesn't happen. Um, for the results, they will post these usually on paper somewhere, a lot of times through the bathroom or concession stand because that's just a high traffic area. But there are some meets that have, um, they post their results on Meet Mobile, which is really convenient. However, I will say that these can be inaccurate sometimes. So I always like to say these are not the final result. Um, you just, it gives you a good idea um, throughout the day. And if there is an error on there, you can bring it to my attention and I can just check up on that. For, oh, and at the end, I don't have this on here, but at the end of every meet, they have awards. And so they, um, depending on the meet, uh, which is usually in their flyer, they'll describe what awards they're going to give, but they'll give out um, the trophies for the high points in each event and then they'll give out a team team trophies at the end for like first or third place usually. Um, and then championships. So I've kind of talked about this already on the meet schedule page, but championships, you have to go to three meets and there are two different types of championships, Bs and As. Okay, so to pay for a meet, you, whenever you sign up, you have to either leave a cash deposit of $100 or have your credit card on file for them to be able to pull um, the, the meet fees every week or the weeks that you sign up for the meets.
to sign up for the meet. We are all online now. And so you will click, well, I'm just gonna show you an ex uh, how to get there. But um, so if we're on the Branson Parks and Recs page. If you go to programs and special events, youth sports, swim team, then you get to, um, well, let me do that. So you can see what page you get to from here. You get to this page. The parent handbook is linked right here. And then you've got, you know, information um, that would be helpful down there. But to sign up for a meet, you go to schedule and you click register. And I think this looks similar to um, this looks similar to like whenever you signed up for the for the team, it's on the same type of application. Um, so you would fill that out there. Whenever everyone, whenever I've sent my entries off, um, there will be they will be linked right here, so you can check those out before you get to the meet. And then whenever I get the results from the host meet, then they will be linked right there. And so you can always check back to make sure your records are straight. Um, as you can see, you can register for all of the meets that you are uh, planning on going to. So the sooner you do that, the easier it is for me. And I actually put that on here. I encourage you to sign up for all the meets you plan on going to as soon as possible. Um, this just helps me get organized and gives me plenty of time to um, enter those entries and uh, make sure that you don't forget as well. So um, you sign up the Friday before the meet, um, and I've explained that because by the next week I have a certain deadline I have to send off the entries to the host team um, so that, they, that way they can get their meet um, all organized. Um, and then your payment does process on Tuesday, so that is when it would take out, uh, the money would be taken out of your account if you choose to put the card on file. Okay, so if you do not enter by Friday, the week before the meet, then unfortunately you will not be entered into the meet. Um, it just, the timeline is too short that, um, that there's just no wiggle room. However, there is usually the opportunity to deck enter. Um, this is based on availability and according to the meet coordinator. So if we were going to um, Asylum Springs, then it would be up to them on if they are allowing it. And I do know this year there, there may be some meets that not, might not provide deck entries, um, but we should know that in plenty of time to let you know um, for your planning purposes. Um, the downfall of deck entries is one, you might not get into an event because they might not have room. Uh, they might not add a new heat just for one swimmer. And two, the entries are double. Um, so you would have to provide a check or cash um, coming to the meet and those fees will be double the normal amount. Okay, the last thing is officials training. So we cannot have swim meets unless we have parents volunteering as officials. Um, and I kind of touched on this earlier with the disqualifications, but there is a training on Saturday, uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. and it is on Zoom and that is so awesome. Um, super convenient to be able to either, you know, be in the car or at home on your living room couch and be able to do this Zoom meeting. Um, I think it's only supposed to be around an hour or so, depending on questions and, and uh, the Q&A at the end. Um, but be, you know, get trained. If anything, it's going to teach you more about swimming. Um, but also it could give you a front row seat to all of the um, all of the events and maybe even your kid. Um, if you would like more information on this, I think there is an email sent out, but I can certainly answer any questions that you may have. Uh, just reach out to me or the RecPlex. Thanks, guys.